Boone's greetings from Tinsley Moretz Baptist in Markham, Texas. Reverend James Ashley Jr. And I, uh, I have a story to share. I won't be long. I'm a 57-year-old man. About five years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, stage four liver disease. And about two weeks after that, I was in the hospital and I had kidney failure. So here I am, this young black man, looking for a liver and kidney. My chances were very slim. I have this thing that is factored with my blood. And God told me, he said, Daryl, I'm going to do this for you, and you're going to know it was me. Doctors told me I needed the need to be an African-American male for my greatest chances. I stayed number one on the list in Houston for the longest. Long story short. Three years, two and a half years in uh, dialysis, I got a call one Monday, and they said, Daryl, can we do your hospital? Well, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and I went there, and I did all the tests. I didn't know that you would have to do a test to see if you were compatible, and then I thought when you go, you were going, you were automatically. But no, see, God was working for me. And they took me right in, and I was delayed. And you come to find out, my liver came from a white woman out of Minnesota, and my kidney from a Hispanic male out of Dallas, no, not Dallas, from uh, the other beach, Corpus, wow. out of Corpus. And when I woke up that morning, they, they did my liver one day, and then they did my kidney the next day. Wow. Wow. Two days later, I was released and out of that home. <laughs> and I haven't been back since. <laughs> By what common experience do we enter into the spiritual fellowship and covenant relationship with one another? Have we been made that we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior? And on the confession of our faith, have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now. What is the greatest bond of our union with God and each other? We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love. What are our great privileges and duties in our own church? To strive for the advancement of the church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, all in its discipline and doctrine. What vows do we gladly make as stewards of that which God had entrusted to us? To contribute cheerfully and greatly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout all nations. For the sake of our home and loved ones, what gracious task do we humbly assume? We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. For the sake of the unsaved for whom our Savior died, what manner of life and conversation are we somberly and sincerely pledged? To walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our healing, Faithful in our engagement and in the delivery of our 
since one is our master, even Christ, and we are all brethren, by what paternal ministry are we to strengthen each other and adore the teaching of our Lord and Savior? We pray that we watch one another in prayer and aid each other in sickness and distress to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courage in speech. To be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mind of the rules of our Savior to see in God's name. What is the is our obligation should we move from this city or vicinity? We must engage and move from this place. Church, where we can carry out the spirit of the covenant and the of God's word. Oh, how many confessions have passed in? We pray for grace and strength to keep the peace of our God for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May be seated. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Can we say amen once again? Amen. Come on, let's put out with a hand together. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. But truly, God is worthy. Amen. I say he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Y'all do know he's worthy to be praised. Amen. We serve, we serve a good God. Amen. He's good all the time. Amen. So we're grateful. Amen. For this time to be back in the house of worship and prayer. Amen. I want to take this moment again to say thank you to all the, uh, the church family, to all the friends, to all of those who have truly been a blessing in our lives and in our family's lives. We thank God for, amen, for last Sunday was a great day. Amen. And, uh, amen. I said it was a great day. And, uh, to be honest about it, amen. I, the Lord have blessed me 24 years to be here. Amen. To serve you all and do the best we can. And I was serving, amen. I thank God for y'all love, y'all kindness, y'all support, amen. 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 I, I, I'm a firm believer and I've learned that people don't have to be kind to you. Amen. I wish I had somebody. Amen. You know, people don't have to be kind. People don't have to. Come on. People don't have to love you. Although we know what the Bible says, we got people... All of us up in here already know that we all walk disobedient to the word of God, Amen. although the word of God tells us to love one another and do good things, but yet still we choose not to. Come on up in here. Amen. So we're so grateful for your love, your kindness. Out of 24 years, if I'm not mistaken, I have to say it myself, Sunday was one of the best, the best. Come out of 24 years of the best. Amen. Anniversary appreciation. Spiritually, uh, uh, it was uh, it was off the chain. Amen. Oh Lord, thank you, Jesus. So we're grateful. We're grateful for for each and every one of y'all. Every ministry, every gift, man. Uh, I'm grateful. Thank y'all. God is good all the time. And so I just wanted to express that to you all. That's my heart. Amen. My wife said the same thing. She don't talk much. She don't do a lot of stuff like she used to do. And <laughs> don't do that. But also, uh, she told me, let me tell you what she told me, Turner. She said, every year, man. I just said, she might not want me to say it. Hey, Amen. But I wear the British. I'm a man, man. Charlie, you I'm a man. So I'm going to pass a crazy movie. I'm glad Bun and I recording. He's not recording this. But she said, man, every year you tell me how much you love me. And I, I said, baby, you missed it. I said, you missed it. You missed it. <laughs> I said, you missed it. I told you I felt like Hal Melvin in the blue oh, 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 If you don't know that now. 
You never will know that. If you don't know by now, Amen. you don't know by now. I started going, you know, do that. We just got a baby with you. You are my darling, darling baby. You are my. You come on here. Yeah. See, y'all y'all think Pastor crazy. Y'all know y'all listen to that. Let me tell you the danger. Not through y'all. The danger. Uh, um, but, but, but turn if you listen to it too long, your feet start to move. We <laughs> ride another day, and Kim hooked my radio up. You know, technology is new to me, so she hooked my phone up to the radio. Right. Uh. So I hit you, you know YouTube music, yeah. Yeah. and he start playing uh, "Treat Her Like a Lady." <laughs> you know, temptation, treat her like a lady. Uh, ain't no stopping us now. We on the move. Man. So we cruise, and you know, we loving on one another. We enjoying, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that. Come on, ain't nothing wrong with that. They weren't talking about dropping them with a high, you know, stuff like that. They, they were helping me to say, you my darling, darling baby. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we, we're grateful, y'all. Keep praying, Lord. We feeling, we feeling better. Yeah. Yeah. We're feeling better. We're not there yet, but we're feeling better. And it's because of the righteous prayers and uh, y'all concern, your love. And Troy, I'm going to say to Brother Troy, Troy, be, I, I'm smelling real good today, man. Yeah, I'm smelling real good today. And, and, um, but I just think, I mean, Troy know we're talking about it. So we're grateful. So if you're really grateful, give the Lord a hand clap of Thank you. Everybody, 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 that's some man. I don't like to go there, but, you know, some special people that wasn't here uh, with me uh, that meant much to me. Yeah. And so we, we thank God for them. Amen. Amen. And uh, so we're grateful. So thank y'all again. Thank you again. Thank you again for. I want to say this, I see one of my homeboys in the house. Yeah. Amen. He didn't stand up with, with the visitor, but Brother Gales is here with me, my good friend, my homeboy. Amen. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. So grateful anytime those who we just roll with and hang with and in the house of the Lord. Yeah. We're so grateful to see you. Yes, sir. Thank God for your presence. You mean much to us, man. Amen. You mean much to us. Uh, we have a special month coming up. This month, uh, we recognize and, and honor all of our youth this whole month. Since this is the youth hey. annual day coming up on the fourth Sunday. Yes, and we have activities planned for, we have a lock-in plan for our youth. We're going to have safe, it's going to be safe, but we're going to have some men sit with them. And our youth uh, matrix will be here to share with them. I think it's on the 21st, amen, we have our youth lock in, so parents, prepare the children, if you want your children to participate, we'll be here, it's going to be safe, it's going to be things done decent on it, we're not going to celebrate trick or treating, come on here, we're not going to lift up Halloween, come on, the wickedness, and we're not going to you know, we got to prepare our children's mind. You know, that whole day, I think we're going to prayer line this morning. They're talking about they, they celebrating the whole month with wicked movies. Yeah. 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 You know, they, 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 they celebrate the whole month with wicked movies. The numbing movies. Yeah. 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 They're already playing that on TV to, to, to celebrate the whole month with wicked movies. You know, yeah. five and the 13th. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we have a tendency to looking at that. Yeah. But in reality, that's wickedness. Yeah. It's planning these thoughts in the minds of our children. Yeah. Yeah. Killing yeah. folk with acts. Yeah. Pitfall. You know, and all that wickedness yeah. and witches, the wicked witch of the East and West. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be careful yeah. what we plan in the minds of our children and our people. Come on, y'all. I know, I know, I know. I, I know, I know, because y'all, you know, 
But we're going to celebrate. We ain't, we ain't going to do it all of that. We're trying to get our children in a safe environment. That's right. That's right. Teach them the principles of godly principles, not wicked stuff. Yeah. Come on. Am I right? Yeah. So we want to do that. So since we honor this moment, we ask Sister Stephanie to come. Each Sunday they would have a reading or something to do. We have, And on the fifth Sunday we will have a great fellowship. Amen. We will have a great fellowship where we're going to serve food again. Amen. Based upon the youth department, Johnson, they gonna they gonna do all the bad. Amen. She looking at me strange now. Amen. That's what I was told. Amen. Surprise! 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 Amen. Come on, so let's give Sister Step in the hand. She just got her hand. Thank you. 
one Monday. He made a way. Yes, he did. That's all right. That's all right. Somebody said, beauty. He made a way. Beauty's all right. Somebody said, beauty.
now we'll be back in the hands of the male court. Amen.
what the time we need prayer. Amen. Amen. It ain't one thing, it's another. That's right, man. That's right. You ain't going in a storm, you're coming out of a storm. Right, right, but God is able. Right. Just a little talk with Jesus. Yes, yeah, that you bow with us. Our Father, how excellent is thy name, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Because we know that this is a day you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, we come right now humble as we know how, Lord. We come with first off thanksgiving in our heart. Yes, sir. Lord, we realize that we have a whole lot to be thankful for. Yes. Lord, we realize that somebody laid down last night and didn't get up this morning. Yes, but we know that you were there, Lord. And we just thank you for allowing us another chance just to say thank you. Thank you. Lord, we realize that somebody has death in the family. Yes. And Lord, we pray for the Marine. We pray the strength. And we, we pray that you keep them with your keeping power. Lord, we know that you're able. Yes, sir. And Lord, somebody don't have food on the table. On, but Lord, we pray that you give them food to Bring be able to Father. eat. Yes. And not only food, but shelter. Lord, yes. we pray for shelter for the ones that that's outside. Lord, we thank you right now. And Lord, we come right now humble as we know how, thanking you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. And Lord, we realize that if it had not been for you on our side, we don't know what we do. And Lord, we come right now, we pray for the shepherd, the angel that you placed at this church. Lord, we pray that you just touch him, Father. Allow him to realize that you're God and you're still God all by yourself. And Lord, we pray healing in the name of Jesus. We pray that you touch him, Lord, and touch him from his head to his toe. Fill him up with your spirit so he'll be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with us. Tell us the reality of serving a real and a true and living God. Lord, we thank you right now. And Lord, we come praying for each and every family that's in the house today. We pray and ask that you touch and supply to every need. And Lord, we realize and understand that you are all of our family. Lord, you told us that man should always pray and not faint. And Lord, we come right now praying and believing and realizing that nothing is too hard for you. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord. We come praying for the absent body of the church. Lord, we pray that you touch them. Touch them and allow them to realize that you still God and you, you know all about them. You know what they stand in need of. And Lord, bless them according to your will. Lord, have your way today. And Lord, we come praying for our pastor's wife. We come praying, asking that you be her balm and Gilead. Lord, we ask that you be her medicine. We ask that you be everything she needs with her aches and pains. Because, Lord, we know that you're able. And, Lord, we come thanking you for all your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. And, Lord, we come praying for the young folks, the children. Lord, we realize that now they're back in school, Lord, and we know that your arms are not short. Lord, you're able to reach them from wherever they are. And Lord, we ask that you cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we know that you're able. Lord, protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger. But we realize Satan is busy. But Satan is limited. But Lord, you are all powerful. And we ask that you continue to hold them and keep them, Lord. Bless the children, the administrators, the teachers, and all the ones at the schoolhouse. And Lord, stop by each and every home. Bless the homes according to your will. Lord, we thank you right now. Because we realize, Lord, if it had not been for you on our side, 
We don't know what we do. But Lord, we thank you for grace and mercy. We thank you for loving kindness and long suffering. We thank you for being patient with us. And Lord, we thank you for giving us what we need when we need it. And Lord, we come praying for the preach word. Bless us from on high with a word that will help us and encourage us these days forward. Lord, we pray for the sick and shut in. Go by the hospitals. Touch them, Father. In the name of Jesus, touch them. Allow them to be healed because we know you got healing power. Lord, we thank you. Lord, bless the ones that don't know you in the part of their sin. Lord, we pray that you regulate their mind, renew in them the right spirit, so they'll come to you in spirit and in truth. He said, truly, you are the one and only living God. Lord, have mercy. Bless my family, Father. Bless my wife, Lord. Lord, you know what she stands in need of. Bless her and keep her. Bless my grandkids. My daughter. Bless us all as a whole. And Lord, allow us to leave out this place renewed and restored. Until a dying world, there is a reality in service of true and risen saints. Lord, we thank you today. Bless the ministerial staff, the deacon staff, the usher board, and all the children everywhere. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise, honor, and the glory, and we all say it.
Tell it now, you can't tell it. <laughs> but I learned something once you get out of the weight room, you just can't jump. Put in office, hey amen. You just can't jump right back into it. I said that to say this, brother Austin. I trying to get back into teaching and preaching just a little bit and, and, and can't do it like I used to do it since the Grisby. Amen. So we learn to take our time and do it little by little. How about that? I'm good. And I know somebody got a clock on me. <laughs> Already, already told me this week I got a clock on you, man. I'm going to give you, I ain't going to tell you how many minutes he get. Uh, I said it he, so y'all already know it's amazing. <laughs> so, but we want to just follow the path. We have had some great teaching. Uh, this last two or three months, our, our teaching. Teachers have done a great job. So I, and the Spirit told me, y'all, that the church, if the church want to be blessed, we got to be on one accord. Come on, wherever, wherever there's unity, there's strength. And we don't want to leave nobody behind. And we don't want, don't want to outrun others. So we want the church, the called out group. Yeah. You know, the, the church is the called out group. Yeah. Us, the believers, we've been called out. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. For the work of the ministry. So we just want to go back and then move forward in our teaching. We have a great teacher in the person of the Holy Ghost. And we want to share what the Holy Ghost said through the Christ from the Sermon on the Mount, from the Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Now, I ought to get about 20 good amens in there. All right. All right. We ought to get at least about 20 good amens. I know 20. We want to look at, we just want to, just, this is going to be uh, the Beatitudes. Our attitude ought to be. Come on, man. This ought to be our attitude. That's what they call Beatitudes. This ought to be our attitude. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we're talking about some brand new. That would be our attitude. Matthew, the fifth chapter. We're going to do a little teaching starting off. And we're going to take our seat because we know our limitations. Matthew is the fifth chapter, and we'll start with verse number one. All right. So, Sam, you okay? You looking at your pastor? Pastor, good. <laughs> Got your hands full. I'm good. Y'all take your, take your mind off of this. Yeah. Think about Amen. what we're going to say. All right. All right. All right. All right. Look, what you, look, what, look what the text says, chapter five. Matthew's the fifth. And seeing the multitude, he went upon a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Did y'all say this? Did that? For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are, I want to, man, I won't really hang my hat there, but we're gonna, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. Now, these are the ones that's going to see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Blessed are you when they revile and they persecute you. And say all kinds of evil against you falsely. For my sake, what you supposed to do, Pastor? Rejoice. Rejoice. And be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I want to talk about a journey into bliss with you. Just want to teach a few principles for this time, amen. Just a few today. If it's the Lord's will, uh, we'll teach a few next week. And if it's the will of God, you'll catch some more Wednesday at 12, and you'll catch some more at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. Amen. Stay tuned in. Amen. 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 Journey into bliss. Who want to be blessed? Amen. In most times, when you get that question being asked by the steward, we'll answer and say that I'm already blessed. The truth of the matter is that you really are. Yes. But the master teacher, see the master teaches a spark here in the text is Jesus. He is the master teacher. He is the one that teaches with authority. But Jeff, he taught so well that it baffled them like the minds of the listeners. Said, his teaching is different. His teaching is different from the Pharisees, the religious folk, the scribes and all of those and the rabbis in those days because he was the master teacher. This journey into blessing is a journey. It's, it's the way that we go. Are you listening to me? So to discover how to have a journey into blessed living, because all of us say we are blessed, but we look at blessed sometimes from a different perspective. Most of the time, we associate materialistic things with blessing. Come on here, we 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 we, we you know we we put those things together: the the fine cars, the houses, the land, you know, and all of those things. But Jesus the master teacher here, is really going to help us to understand what blessed is really about. It's really paradoxical what he's talking about, because when you start understanding the beatitude, it just don't make sense the way he's teaching it, but he's giving you the true meaning of being blessed. So 
that you can discover how to have a journey into blessing, and we must carefully, yes, consider, Reverend Bass, the introduction of Jesus' first sermon. Right. This is first sermon, the sermon on right. Jesus. Come on. Come on. Is y'all gonna let me teach just a little while today and I'll be at your way. We call this section of this sermon the Beatitude. It's amazing, uh, baby, how he started his teaching, he started his sermon with the Beatitude. What should our attitude be? And you know us as a people, sometimes we have bad. Some time, but we have some bad attitudes. And you know, but the beatitude is going to teach us. If you stay with me, Sister Bad, if you stay with me just a little while, it's going to teach us how to deal with difficult people. You, you got to have the right attitude to, to deal with difficult Anybody ever been to know difficult people? I mean, don't look. Don't look at your husband and wife right now. No, 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 let's go. Just keep it to yourself. Don't look at your neighbor right now. But the beatitude will teach you how to deal with difficult people. And you got to understand, I'm already way, I'm way out here already. You got to understand when you're dealing with difficult people, you got to understand people have went through something. Yeah. Yeah. You might not know what they went through and they have a difficult moment. So the body of Christ, Jim, kingdom dwellers, which we are, we got to learn, Brother Mercy, how to deal with the, the Texas Taylor the teachers. So large crowds of people, the text opened up saying that was a multitude. Yeah. Then they open up like that. That was a multitude of people. Yeah. And they was following Jesus. He said his disciples came to him. Now, uh, not just the twelve, because it was a multitude. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? Can I just teach you? Something? It was a multitude, a multitude of people, uh, disciples following Jesus. A disciple is a what? A follower? And Jesus had a multitude following him. That was the text say. Am I right? Large crowds of people have come from Galilee and Jerusalem in the text, Judea and other places to hear him. Yeah. Amen. Jesus first recorded a sermon to call the Sermon on the Mount because of what he does when he sees the large crowd of people. Yeah. He takes them to the mountain. He sits down uh, in a position and posture of being seated because that was the posture of a teacher in biblical days. They, they would sit down yeah. and teach. Yeah. The people. So the introduction of this teaching, y'all, the great sermon tells us how to have a journey into blessed living. Say blessed living. Blessed living. Jesus' sermon is first presented amidst the climate, watch this, of great unhappiness. He was dealing in a situation came to where people was unhappy Come on. Come on. because of the political uh, evilness that was going on. Come on here, somebody. Because of the social and the racial injustice that were going on in that day, somebody ought to say amen because we're living in that same time today. That there's a lot of unhappiness in our society because of the fact that of the racial, the social injustice going on. The climate of unhappiness was going on. Roman taxation was going on. Why taxes was high. Gas was high. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, camel food was high. Yeah. Let me bring it home. You know, yeah. That's right. Camel food was high. And donkey food was high. And, and had a problem. So they had a problem in the case of unhappiness. So Jesus takes the time and talks about being blessed. His word being blessed means being happy. See, happy, you know, some of us. Oh, Lord, I'm ready. Some of us only get happy because of what's going around. If the happiness is good. You know, the root word, watch this in London, the root word of happy is hap, H-A-P. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And me, it deals with circumstances and issues going on. Is y'all going to pray with me? Yeah. So Jesus, it takes the time, Brother Finn, and help us to understand if you want a journey 
into blessed living. Number one, he said, can I go along? Move? Can I go along? Let me help us here. Let me help us here. First of all, if you're really going to be happy, mm -hmm. you got to avoid the wrong pursuit. Look out. Come on now, because some of us pursuing after the wrong thing. Come on now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Get over here. Some of us is going and pursuing after the wrong thing. We're trying to find happiness in the wrong place. I know you want me to just stay on place, but sometimes we look for happiness in the wrong people. The wrong pursuit. What you're going after. What what you think will make you happy all the time don't make you happy. And even if you do, brother, get it only temporary. It don't last all the way. And then when you got a hold to it, it wasn't really what you were. Really oh, 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 oh. You got to avoid the wrong pursuit. Yeah. You can't find, you know, that, that what you think might make you happy in the end might make you <laughs> most search for blessed life and, and fortune and fame. Come on, am I right now? We look for happiness in the wrong place. So we got to avoid, number one, if you want to have a journey to blessed living, make sure you avoid the wrong pursuit. You know, some people think they're going to get happy when they get the big car. Come on, come on, come on. I was rolling yesterday, I rolled up yesterday, I was rolling yesterday. I, was, uh, I went to the car wash, I washed up one of the cars, you know, came, came scrolling like I used to, I go to drive through. And uh, uh, brother rolled up in a Bentley. I seen him at a distance. It, it draws my attention at a distance. No, I'm being real. I mean, he, was, he was rolling high. He, he, he rolling big. You know, I, I'm in a young group of people. I got to deal with my young folks over here. But Troy, he was rolling big, man. He was rolling big. Man. He looked it real good, man. I, I, I told him not to look at brother. I said, you rolling big, man. Yeah, yes, sir, I'm rolling big, man. He said, that's, he said, I just want to enjoy life. Good young brother. Just, just, just enjoy life. He said, I don't need to get to me. Yeah. We came out from the same background. He said, I came out of South Park. And I said, okay, he knew some of my people, and I brought up some names. He said, yeah, I remember Baller teaching and all of that. He used to roll. I said, okay. And so anyway, he parked right beside me. I said, I just didn't want to take a peek, man. <laughs> Turn out, peeped in on him. He was, he was rolling good. Six thousand dollars worth of rims on that Narucci rims. All new CCI rims. And I said, okay. And he said, I just try to enjoy life. And I said, well, that's, that's, that's good, man. That's, that's good. I said, that's real nice. And I said, he said, I just want to enjoy life. But he said a principle that made good sense. He said, I just try to treat everybody. He said, I try to treat everybody right. And take one day at a time. I said, that's a good principle, young man. He was a big guy. I said, good principle. I said, I've been pastoring for 24 years. And I said, I found true happiness in a different way. Enjoy the things of life. I say, I always tell the people of God, if you really want happiness, connect up with Jesus the Christ. If you really want happiness that's going to last and has eternal value, hook up with Jesus. And he'll give you truth. Anybody can testify that ever since you hooked up with Jesus, that he gave you some happiness with some happiness. All of your understanding. I mean, we try to get happiness in areas of our life. Come on, I can call on two or three, or three, at least three right here. 
ain't gonna, ain't gonna deal with nobody over here. Just these three right here. That, that, that we tried to find happiness in all the wrong places, but when we hooked up with Jesus, come on, come on here, somebody. We learn how to avoid the wrong pursuit. Are you praying with me? Yeah, so number one, if you want this journey, Sister Bonnie, into a uh, blessed life, avoid the wrong pursuit. And then you got to abide. Y'all need to catch these promises. Not only do you avoid the wrong pursuit, but you got to abide in the right pursuit. All right. All right. All right. Uh, the right pursuit is this, understanding the word that open each beatitude. Can I teach you the why, bro, bro? Yes, sir. Through these the beatitudes from 3 to 11, it helps us to understand something that's very important. The word is often used interchangeable with happy. This word blessed in our beatitude is interchangeable. Uh, the definition of happy is favored by circumstance. Is y'all praying with me? Oh, lucky. That's what you know with reps and all that. Because the root word hap means chance or luck. Yeah. Yeah. And most of us think we're living, you know, by chance and luck. Yeah. We say we're very lucky folk. Yeah. I don't use that term. I'm blessed. Yeah. Uh, I got favor with God. And anybody else got favor with God? Some you didn't deserve, but he gave it to you. We are, we are favored folk. Therefore, if your hap is good, Brother Finn, you are happy. Yeah. But if your hap is bad, then you are unhappy. Yeah. Huh? In other words, happiness is based upon circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. However, what Jesus is talking about when he used the word blessed goes way beyond the word happy. Yeah. The word blessed was used in reference to Greek gods. Yeah. Can I have somebody here? Yeah. They were considered to be happy within themselves because they were not affected by the circumstances that happened in the world. Yeah. Many times we get wrapped up in the things of the world. Yeah. And if you're not careful, the, look, look at the things of the world is very discouraging. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Y'all might well come on walk with me. When you look at the world today, let me talk to real folk. Ain't it discouraging? Yeah. Let me tell you something. When, 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 when babies are being killed every day, when people are killing everybody every day, when shooting is going on every day, when government is crooked and, you know, and all messed up and people want to be dictators of other people's lives, it's very discouraging. That's why Isaiah said it this way. They that keep their mind on him. Should I get some help up in here? I said, can I get a little help over there? They that keep their mind on him, he'll keep them in perfect peace if you trust in him. Take your mind off the world and put your mind on him. It's only a journey into happy and blessed Yeah, slow down here. I feel my help coming on. Yeah. If y'all praying with, pray with me. So this word blessed. Yes, yes. It's different than just being happy. It's paradoxical to me because Jesus. I say it's paradoxical to me in the teaching, man, meaning that it just don't make sense what he's saying. So he starts off talking about blessed is the poor in spirit. Yeah. How can I be happy or blessed when my spirit is poor? What are you talking about, Jesus? It don't, don't make sense to most of us. I'm blessed. I'm happy because my spirit is poor. Jesus, God has already got his back. Are you trying to wrap, verse 2, you trying to wrap your mind around that right now because most of the time when your spirit is down, you really not happy. Am I right? Come on, come on, right somebody? When, when, you, when you got circumstances going crazy in your life and Jesus is not talking about you need to be happy. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For they shall inherit the earth. What is you talking about? I'm glad you asked me. Huh? Because y'all already know, see, y'all just still back because you're waiting for an answer. I, I, I feel it. Come on, give me an answer. He said, Blessed, happy when your spirit is poor. Now, it don't make sense to it. It don't make sense to it. He said, You are blessed, you're happy because your spirit is poor. 
When we become, oh, well, Lord, have mercy. Yes, this, 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 this blessing he's talking about, this, 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 this is what, is what believers experience as being believers. Yeah, yeah. That was blessing. Right? See, you experience some being a believer that nobody has experienced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I go on? Yeah. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Let me, let me get there, let me get there. Let me get there, let me get there. He said now, he said, this, this word poor refers to someone who's destined to, destitute to the point of begging. Yeah. 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 When you're poor, you're destitute to the point of begging. You become a beggar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, can I help you? Can I teach you a while? Huh? Huh? That, that was the same thing. Same. So Jesus used the Greek word to describe Lazarus as a beggar. So yeah. you, you, you come to the point in your life that you, under, you, you come to the point of humility. Yeah. That you recognize something that you can't make it without it. Yeah. Right. Amen. You spiritually not not where you want to be or need to be, so you become a beggar depending upon Him. So once once we start, watch this, is someone. Once you start depending upon the Lord, yeah. 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 once you make your mind and humble yourself not to depend on yourself, your spirit is. Who will become a beggar, you become humble enough that then God will bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Because you become spiritually poor. You understand something about yourself to the bed that if it don't be for the Lord, I can't make it. Do I have anybody that's poor in their spirit that you understand that now you're poor in spirit and you understand that if I humble myself before the mighty hands of the Lord, the Lord going to bless me, then I'm going to inherit something. Yeah. That makes me happy. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a proud and not arrogant thing. I can do it all by myself. My spirit is poor. I'm depending upon him because I realize in him that I live, in him that I move, and in him I have my being. Do anybody else up here understand what I'm saying? That you're happy because you got somebody you can depend on. Jesus says, blessed, happy, fortunate, huh? Envied by others because of the fact that you have a poor spirit. Jesus, let me tell you the blessed part of that. Jesus exalts. Come on, get somebody. Jesus exalts the humble. Uh, he lifts up those who humble themselves under his mighty hand. Jesus comforts those, yes, that's going through something in their life. And you understand you can't do it on your own, that you got to depend on him. Do I have anybody up in here beside myself depending on him? So Jesus teaches this thing and say, man, look here, you're blessed. You're happy. You're living a good life now because your spirit is poor. Because most of us, you still can't wrap your mind around. Huh? Huh? So now, once you become poor in spirit, this is what you start doing. You quit comparing yourself. You know that I think it was Pastor Blake said that the, the Sunday if y'all paid attention to the message. He's used the three C's. Is this, was anybody else in the house? You quit comparing and you quit complaining, but yet you just keep continuing. And most time we get poor in spirit because we start complaining. With somebody else. Yeah. 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 What other hand? Yeah. And you don't have at the time. Yeah. Anybody have been guilty that you look out and see how God has blessed others and you wonder why I ain't got what they got? Well, you don't know what they did to get what they got. Quit <laughs> comparing ourselves with other folks. Come on, I'm just trying to help somebody. I'm talking about this journey into blessed living. When I learn how to quit comparing myself to any other preacher, pastor, yeah. any other person, yeah. amen, yeah. my life took a turn for the better. Yeah. Because I always was looking at others, how what they're doing in me. And I was yeah. guilty of that until the Lord showed me, I got you where I want you. Yeah. I gave you what I want you to have. I gave you the people that I want you to have. Don't worry about nobody that's got four or five thousand. You just get in that little old buggy that E.W. told me to. You get in that little buggy and you get up in that sit up in there and you just buggy on down. And whatever I have for you, I ain't got to compare to nobody else. But I'm trying to help somebody what God got for you. 
It's for you. Whatever God does for you, sister, it's for you. Can't nobody stop it. I'm, I'm skipping across the gap, but just for the sake of time, y'all got to quit in a few minutes. I know when to quit. I know when to quit. I know when to quit. All right, All right so I need to stop comparing. Yeah. Amen. So I stop comparing myself. Yeah, I need to become poor in spirit. I need to become a beggar. Yeah. Am I right? God is merciful unto us. Yeah. Then I got to stop counting on performances. this because, you know, you, you, you can't be faking and shaking. Man. I got to stop counting on performances. Why did Jesus put this beatitude first? Because being poor in spirit is the first prerequisite to receiving the rest of God's blessing. If we think we are righteous because of the good things we do, God can't bless us. God don't bless us because you do good. You and I cannot do good enough. Come on here. God bless us because of his nature. That's right. Because of what his nature is. Because of who he is. He's the one that's gracious. Yeah. He's the one that's merciful. Yeah. Is y'all praying with me? Am I right, Sister Smith? Yeah, he's the one that, that blesses us in spite of us. Yeah. You mess up, he's still blessed. Yeah. You cut and shout, he's still wake you up in the morning. Yeah. Come on up in here. Can I get some help up in here? Anybody, go, anybody feeling what I'm saying? You, you, we know we mess up, but God still shows mercy. Yeah. You have to put your hand on yourself and confess with your own self. Prophesy to your own self. Yeah. You got the power to do it. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You have to worry about my performance. It's not by works. Come on here, somebody. If, I had, if Paul could come up in here today. If I can call him from the dead, if I can call him from on the right hand of the Father, he'll tell you something. For by grace have you been saved, not by works. Lest any man should boast, it's a gift that comes from God. You know he did say, for we are his workmanship, created unto good works before the foundation of the world. God already had a plan from the baby before the foundation of the world. He already had some good works. I got to get out of here, y'all. So we think we are righteous because of good things we do. We can't get blessed. Doesn't matter how often you come to church. And it's good to come to church. Let me help somebody because I don't want you to keep, keep job skipping school. I don't want you to keep skipping class. So we got to make sure we don't want to leave no gray areas. We don't want to leave no gray areas. See, because if we leave gray areas, then we'll be contradicting what the word of God said. Although we know that just coming to church don't save us. Amen. But we do know what the Hebrew writers say. Don't forget to assemble yourself amongst other believers. For the day is fast to approach. Yes, it is. So we need to come together, not for just to be coming together, but to what? Provoke one. The Bible teaches us to provoke one another to love. Yeah. Yeah. Having fellowship with one another. Are you praying with me? Is that y'all all right? Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's, doing good? Doing good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter how often you go to church, how much money we give. Yeah. How often we read the Bible fast or pray. Yeah. Am I right? There will be a lot of moral religious people like the Pharisees in hell. Religious, moral folk, just like they're going to be in hell. The reason is found in Isaiah 64 and 6. What is it? But we are like an unclean thing. Oh, I wish I had the time to tear 
He said, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. All. A-L-L. Yeah. Remember that? You? Unclean. Yeah. Pastor Brooks, me. Yeah. Reverend Rosen, Deacon Hawkins. Yeah. Yeah. We are all like an unclean thing. And our righteousness are like filthy rain. He said, my righteousness is like filthy rain. Now, man, he's talking about something that filthy and it deals with the woman on her ministry. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Everybody dealing with filthy rage. Yeah. Like a woman on her ministry. Can I teach y'all? I know y'all got it. life, man. Yeah. I'm trying to have this to say that's how that's how our righteousness is. Yeah. That's how filthy our righteousness is. When we try to perform. Yeah. When we try to do the right thing in our own way and our own spirit. He said, you ain't no, you you just as unclean as a woman that just got off a of ministry period. Got a, you understand. That's how filthy and unclean it is. That's how your righteousness is when you try to do it yourself. But when you receive Jesus, yeah. uh, yeah. him, his righteousness has been imputed upon you. He give it to you. He throws it upon you. Anybody blessed? Anybody want to live a blessed life? Yeah. Let, let me move on. Yeah, let me get out here. So watch this. Start considering the benefits of being poor in spirit. What is the benefit of you? This is the text. Being, what do I benefit from me being poor in spirit? Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Notice Jesus did not say theirs will be the kingdom of heaven. The promise is present tense. Yeah. Yeah. There he is. There he is. Right. There's ears. Yeah. It's present to me right now. We don't have to wait to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom of heaven till we get to heaven. You can be blessed right here. Yeah. In other words, it's a divine delight yeah. of heaven can be ours here and now. Come on, here's something. See, y'all, you got to move out of the natural thinking and move into the spiritual realm. Amen. When you're with Jesus, you can experience, you know, the, the writer said this, when I sit in heavenly places. Yeah. All right. It means that just I'm just like I'm already there. Yeah. Amen. Come on, y'all. When I have a relationship with the Lord, Brother Stewart, it's just like I am a seat already there. We call that hope. Y'all yeah. yeah. don't want to get it today. Y'all don't want to get it today. See, hope is their assured expectation. It's not wishful thinking. Yeah. It's not by love, Brother Gary. When I receive the Lord, it's just like I'm already in hell. Yeah. I'm just got a little hang-up down here, but my seat is already in hell. That's why I like to say, I got a seat in God's kingdom. Anybody else feel that way? I'm through. And so, yeah. So, so we're blessed, folks. We're blessed because of our spirit is blessed. And I hope the Lord allow me to teach that for the fifth one, that blessed are those who thirst and hunger after righteousness. I hope I can get to it one day. Because I want to see what your spiritual appetite is about. I hope I can teach one day that blessed are the merciful. I'm happy because I'm merciful. And not only that, but I've seen the benefit of me being merciful. Because I'm going to gain mercy. If I show mercy, 
Come on, somebody here. And when I'm merciful, yes, I know how to deal with difficult folk. When I thirst, Lord have mercy. Yeah, when I when I thirst after hunger for his righteousness. He gave me a promise, y'all. Sister Linda, didn't he promise us something? He said, we shall be filled if I have a thirst for it. If I hunger after, if I got a spiritual appetite. Huh? If my appetite is for righteousness, he said, I'm going to be filled. So I'm blessed. Because I have an appetite. You know, you can go to the doctor and the first thing you're going to ask is, how's your appetite? Yeah. 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 And if you, if, you, if you, know, you ain't eating to the man, this ain't got an appetite, they feel like something is physically wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? Come on, y'all. I, I, I know something about going to the doctor now. Oh, yeah. How's your appetite, Mr. Brooks? Oh, man, I ain't eating to the, you, you, what? We need to check you out because something's wrong with you. Yeah. Unless you're fasting. They ain't going, they, they're not talking spiritually. Yeah. Same way of mercy. Mercy, if, if, if your spiritual appetite ain't right, you're not living a spiritual healthy life. All right. Huh? All right? May God bless you today. We just opening up some seats. That we can live under the blessed. We're on a journey of blessed living. And anybody in their right mind want to be blessed. Yeah. 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 Right mind, even sinners want to be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. They just look at it from a different perspective. Yeah. And let me tell you something. There's some fringe benefits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ah. The same Jesus in the same sermon in 633 of Matthew. He said something to the believers. I'm just going to give y'all biblical principles. I was at home going yesterday. I said, y'all, I found out that it's about God's word and the comfort that we get in God's word when you're going through something. You need to hear what God is saying. Jesus said it this way. You can read it for yourself. He said in Matthew, the sixth chapter, the same sermon. Yes, sir. It's kingdom principles. Yes, Seek ye first. Yes, what he said now. Why well, say this for your life? This you want to get blessed. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Didn't he say that Bible student? Not second, not third, it have to be prioritized. He say the kingdom, God's rule, God's way, God's plan. This is what he said. Seek the kingdom first and his righteousness. So that help me to understand there's righteousness in the kingdom of God. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. All the things that you're seeking will be added unto you. Gave you so now I got to find out about the things. I mean, if I just do it. So I drifted back up to verse 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, all the verses. He said, the things that the Pharisees seek after. Clothes, yeah. Yeah. Huh? cars, cash, all of that food and stuff and all that. He said, that's what the Pharisees seek. But if you seek me first, all of those things will be added to you. That's what he said. That's what he mean. 
you can trust him. So if you want some stuff added, then stuff out of the gym. But y'all don't understand sometimes, man. How God does that. Sometimes he subtracts just so he can add Come on! forever bless you. I thank y'all for your patience with me. I pray today as we continue to journey into this blessed life and the attitude. This should be our attitude. We should be happy. It is a growing process. It don't come overnight. It don't come overnight. It don't consist of it. don't come overnight. It comes with consistent Bible study, relationship with the Lord, reading the Bible, praying. I love when good preaching come along. The preacher helped us so much last week. Y'all know you got to strategize your prayer. You got to know prayer works. You got to understand that prayer is part of your worship. Just, just, just don't get God's word and let it just drift away. Take it. Take it, Brother Simon, and use it. Yeah, all right. Just use it. Keep use it, young yeah. yeah. Don't let no devil in here. Don't you let no devil in here uh, contradict what God said to you. God told you, bless your best. Being satisfied with God. Mm -hmm. He'll satisfy your thirst. Now those songs that I just can't get none. No, no, no satisfaction. But in the Lord, He'll satisfy you. Come on, say He'll satisfy you. He'll, he'll, he'll save you. Won't He do it? I said He'll save you. He'll keep you safe. Then he'll satisfy you. Yes, he will. May God bless you. May God keep you in prayer. trust in everything else. But when you trust Jesus, he will give you rest. With all the turmoil going on. And I thank God we're not over in a foreign country. But we right here where Jesus is. And he's able, church. There may be someone today that trying to find peace in the midst of the storm. Can I recommend Jesus to you? Will you come today? Will you come? Search for everything else. Don't let that lottery get big. And then we take our last two dollars, like Johnny Taylor said, try to find happiness. But I still want to recommend Jesus. He's more than all the money in the world. Will you come? Just trust him. Will you come today? You may 
may have fallen out of fellowship with him. There's a strong possibility that you have. But wherever you left him at, he's still there waiting on you. Will you come? that your mind is already made up. You already have a relationship with the master. Amen. We hear from our sister. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. two months since I've been in the house. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes. And it's just good to be in the house. This journey has been long. But the pilgrim nights have been so sweet. The calls, the cards, the prayers. I heard somebody say last week, the prayer is something. If you pray, something's bound to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I laid on that bed a many nights. Praying. I didn't know if I was going to get up. That pain was so bad. And at one time, I said, okay, I'm ready to go. Let's take me on. Yeah. Pain will make you humble yourself. Yeah. And if you don't believe it, just try. Yeah. So I wasn't here last week. And it spoke on you. And Pastor Joe, if, if they ain't here to do it, you better hop along up here and do something. Well, I'm here today. I have a pastor. <laughs> I have, and I want you to know, all the things that they said about you, and you, they said about you. Listen, that was what they said. But what's in my heart probably was different from what everybody else said. But I want you to know that I love you today. Yeah. And you keep on keeping on. You have to take that cane. God said that propping you up. And I'm just glad to be here, y'all. So glad to see your faces. Amen. Just love you to the bottom of my heart. I love you, I love you, I love you. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I want to thank my pastor. He, he kept me going. All right. <laughs> Don't you start out letting that there. Uh, he, he kept me going, but listen. I'm walking with that third leg now, but God get my feet together. I had reconstruction surgery to both my feet. Wow. That's painful, y'all. That's painful. It still hurts. But I'm going on and on in Jesus' name.
when you know what you know, when you know who you know, is able to keep you, it makes a difference. So we're going to let our pastor come out. Y'all give him a hand for that message. Amen. We thank you for your prayer. We, the hour is far spent. We now want you all to prepare your heart for the Lord's Supper. Amen. We shall administer the Lord's Supper. We're going to go back and prepare ourselves. Be patient with us. We only a few more minutes. This is serious. This is very serious. As often as we do this, come on, let me prepare. As often as we do this in remembrance of what he did, let us prepare our hearts to receive the supper. Amen. Amen. We'll be right back in to uh, administer the supper. Amen.
has the scripture, 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, verse 23 through 26. This is what's been said. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, brethren. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. He said, Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. He said, Do this. Whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this grape and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death yeah. until he comes. First Corinthians 11, chapter, verse 23 through 26. May the Lord have a blessing and a blessing upon the reading, the hearers, most of all believers, and the doers of his word. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for you allowed us to remember this and instructed us as often as we do this. It's in remembrance of what you have done for us. Lord, as often as we do this, we remember how you hung bled and died on Calvary. As often as we do this, God, we have the opportunity when we leave here to share with others what you did for us on Calvary. So we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We pray for forgiveness of sin in our lives. Yes, Lord. Transgression, trespass. We thank you for the shedded blood that covers our sin. You proclaimed and made it known that for without the shedding of blood, there is no remission forgiveness of our sins. Oh Lord, collectively this day as we stand around the table waiting to partake of your supper, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Master. That you didn't come down, but you stayed there. Yes, sir. You gave your life that we could have life to the full day. We say thank you. Thank you. And by your stripes, Pray now that you bless the elements as we partake of the bread, symbolizing your life that you gave for us. They didn't take your life. Yes, Lord. You laid your life down. Yes. For old wretched people like us, yes. you allowed them to nail you to an old rugged cross. Yes. They rivet your feet. Yes. They pierce your hands. <laughs> Blood ran down for forgiveness of sin. Water for baptism. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. As we receive it, help us to keep our minds on Jesus. Yes, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Bless the one that's going to serve you. Bless them that's going to receive you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray.
Amen. 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 Amen.